something I hear a lot is I just bought an iPad but I don't really use it much or I've got an iPad and I just use it to watch Netflix and YouTube or why would I use an iPad when my laptop is way better? And I totally hear you. When I first picked up an iPad Pro in 2018, I had all the intention of using it as a creative tool but I ended up falling back to my laptop all of the time. Since then though, I've slowly but surely built up my iPad usage and thanks to some big updates from Apple, I've started using my iPad way more than I ever did before. And today I wanted to share with you my tips on how to get the absolute most out of your iPad. Before we get started though, YouTube loves to keep reminding me that only 12% of you are subscribed to the channel. So if you do like aesthetic tech videos and iPad content, I've got loads of that here. So be sure to subscribe and join the community. Anyway, let's get right into it. To set the scene of this video, I wanted to start off by saying an iPad isn't a laptop and a laptop isn't an iPad. They're two different computing devices with some crossover in the middle. And as soon as you stop comparing the two, the more sense you can make of iPad workflows and it will help you figure out the best way to use it. This will be different for everyone of course, but as soon as I started doing this, I used the iPad much more than I ever did before. A good example of this for me was moving all of my note taking over to the iPad rather than using my laptop or PC. Sure, I can do that on a laptop, but the experience for me is much, much better on the iPad and I get much richer, fully featured notes from it. You might have to find the right app for you, but more than anything, I encourage you to lean into what an iPad can do better than a laptop, rather than trying to replace the laptop with something that it already excels at. Let's talk about accessories because in my opinion, it's going to be difficult to get the most out of an iPad without a couple of these. First off, I think the really, really essential tool for the iPad is the Apple Pencil. This is what really separates it from other computing devices out there and opens up new ways of interaction with the iPad. If you're planning on taking notes, editing photos, or becoming a fully fledged digital artist, then the pencil is an absolute must have. Not only is it fantastically responsive and as close as you can get to pen and paper in the digital world, but it's also super intuitive. The pencil snaps to the side for pairing, charging, and storage, and it couldn't be more ideal. Secondly, a lot of people will benefit from a keyboard and the good part here is you can go to any level you like. Apple sell the super high-end Magic Keyboard which has a trackpad built in which is great but there's a plethora of other options out there so you really don't have to spend much to grab one. My favourite though is the classic Apple Smart Keyboard Folio which folds away nicely so you can still use the iPad as a tablet still. But a solid setup I did use for a good while was the much cheaper Logitech Keys to Go which is a great crazy slim rechargeable keyboard that connects through Bluetooth. Using this with a stand worked for me for a long time before I invested in the keyboard folio. You can obviously go even lower than that though if you want to. Pretty much any Bluetooth keyboard will work or you can even go full enthusiast and connect up a mechanical keyboard for the ultimate over the top experience. A keyboard is generally a great addition if you're looking to do more classical computing tasks on your iPad, like typing up Word documents, browsing the internet, or just chatting. Thirdly, and the final essential in my eyes, is a USB-C adapter. Now that most iPads are using USB-C, it's worth taking advantage of it with a decent adapter. There's about a million out there to choose from, and depending on what you need, you can get one that's going to work for you best. Personally, I've used the Kingston Nucleon one for a really long time, which is pretty solid, and I mainly use it for that SD card reader so I can import all of my photos and videos to the iPad. Moving on from there, there's some really good paid apps which I think you should check out. Just like any computer, the best apps are often locked behind a paywall and the iPad is no different. I really recommend you take a look at some of the more professional apps out there if you really want to unlock the potential of the iPad. My favorite examples of this are LumaFusion, which is a fully fledged video editor which can handle 4K footage no problem and is probably going to be the best video editor on iPad for a long time unless Apple decides to put Final Cut on here, which isn't likely. Another one is Adobe Lightroom, which has been my favorite app on the iPad for a really long time because it makes editing photos so easy and intuitive and interacting with them on a touchscreen just feels like the right place to do it. GoodNotes 5 is my personal choice for taking notes on the iPad. It's a wonderful app that really brings a sense of physicality to digital note taking, and it's always being updated with new features, which is really nice. 
And finally, Procreate is a massive go-to for many digital artists out there. It's simple to use, yet has layers and layers of complexity if you really want to get into it. Now, I know there's often a feeling that if an app is over 99p, then it's too much, especially with many apps becoming freemium. But if you can put that aside, have a browse of the App Store and dive into some of these more premium apps, and you'll soon realize there's so much more you can actually do with the iPad. That leads me on to another point I feel really strongly about. You should use the iPad for note taking. Combined with the Apple Pencil, it's one of the finest things the iPad does. The built-in Apple Notes app is a fantastic starting place and is probably enough for most people, but it's really worth looking at a paid app if you take a huge amount of notes or if you're looking for a better experience. I actually made an entire video about the best note taking app, so I'll link that in the description, but there's a really good selection of free and paid apps out there that can skyrocket your note taking experience. This is also another point where the Apple Pencil comes in clutch. I've always preferred to hand write my notes rather than type them, and the Apple Pencil makes that experience the closest to pen and paper it can be. If you haven't already, you should try connecting a controller to the iPad and experience some genuine gaming on here. I've really enjoyed doing this for a long time, and with services like Google Stadia, GeForce Now, Xbox, xCloud, you can even play console level titles on the iPad. My personal favorite way to play these games though are the ones that are solely based on the iPad. There's a huge amount of power under the hood of these tablets, and there's some really awesome games that show it off really well. A few examples of some of the exceptional titles I've played are Sayonara Wild Hearts, Genshin Impact, The Pathless, and Hyperlight Drifter. Now, obviously, I don't want this video to turn into a, hey, you should just spend more money on your iPad for it to be good, but I also really think it's worth giving Apple Arcade a go. A lot of the titles I've enjoyed the most have come from here, and I can't explain how nice it is to be free of microtransactions and heavy upfront costs when you want to try out a new game. And not to mention, there's some really nice little exclusives on there too. As a bonus, if you already have a PS4 or Xbox One in the house, then those controllers will connect to the iPads no problem at all, and you can start gaming straight away. If you don't, then I really like this controller from 8BitDo. It's a retro SNES inspired one that's great for shorter bursts of play. Another thing I hear a lot of is the general distaste of iPad OS as well an OS. And a lot of it is totally valid. I would agree that the file system is nothing on Finder or Windows Explorer. It's missing like really little features like copy times and progress bars when moving around files. But there's also some really great features of iPad OS that work really nicely. Getting to grips with multitasking is something that's been totally worth it for me, and I think a lot of people forget it's even a thing. Most apps are capable of being run side by side, which is the obvious one, but SlideOver is also well worth getting into. This allows you to have apps open in a small floating window on the side of the iPad, which you can pull and push in with a simple swipe. I find the best apps to put in here are small ones, so things like Twitter, Spotify, and to-do lists. Oh, and one of my favorite tips for iPad OS is if you don't have a keyboard attached, you can pinch on the keyboard to get the little keyboard. This will give your apps much more room to fit out the screen, and it should make typing even quicker as it's the same size as the iPhone's one. You can even move it around too, which is pretty ideal. There's also a host of new features on the way from iPad OS 15 too, like universal control, a better multitasking experience, and a bigger build out of widgets. So that's worth keeping an eye on too. Finally, if you do find yourself working on a laptop or a PC all day, then an iPad is still a great companion for those devices. Now that a lot of us are working from home, you can use the iPad as a second screen through Sidecar on the Mac or through Duet Display on Windows. I'll still use it for taking notes on the side of a laptop or for keeping a client brief open while I work on a video or photography project. There's plenty of ways to find utility for it too. If you're on the newer M1 iPad Pros, then center stage for video calls is an awesome feature to have if you're moving around a lot, or if your webcam quality is just really poor and you want to keep using your laptop while you're on the call with no interruptions, then obviously the iPad can do that too. So there's all the ways I personally get the most from my iPad, but it is worth keeping in mind that we're all different and we all have different ways of working. So while I recommend you give some of these tips a go, they might not work exactly as they do for you as they do for me. 
There's also so many other things the iPad can do that I haven't mentioned here. Some people have really good productivity hacks with shortcuts, and some people make use of totally different app sets to get stuff done on their iPad. For me though, this is it. I hope you found it useful and enjoyed the video. If you did, pop a like on the way out. That would be massive, and I will see you all in the next one.